Welcome back to another video in a series that I'm calling Terminal Velocity. This is a set of videos where I talk about the command line and how you can improve your usage of it. Today, I wanna to talk about a command line library that I've been using recently to create better shell scripts, and I think you're gonna like this one. We're gonna start here on charm.sh. This is the website of a pretty cool group that are making great libraries for building rich terminal applications. As you can see, if we scroll down here, they've got a bunch of libraries in the set, all for doing really cool things in your command line application application, and they're all specifically written in Go. And so you can use these if you're writing Go applications to make your command line interface much more rich. Now, I don't really write much Go myself, so these aren't particularly useful to me as they are. But Charm recently came out with Gum, which is a tool for writing glamorous shell scripts. It's actually just a wrapper for some of their other libraries, and it allows you to use the power of those libraries in a classic old bash script. As soon as I saw this library, I had a great idea. I wanted to rewrite a script I wrote several years ago. It was a node script that would execute some child processes on the command line, and it was all about managing branches in Git. So we're gonna rewrite that script today in bash using Gum instead of in JavaScript. So we're here on the command line, and the first thing we're gonna need to do is make sure we have gum installed. Now, if you're on a Mac, you can just do brew install gum, which I've already done. As you can see, we have the gum command. If you're on other operating systems, the install instructions are in the readme, and I'll have a link to the repo down in the description box below. So now that we have gum, how can we use this? As you can see, there are a bunch of commands that we can use. There are a couple of interesting ones, I think, that will be useful for this script. So I'm going to create a script here called git, branch manager.sh. Now there are three things that I want to do when I'm managing branches. First, I might just want to delete a couple of branches. That's pretty straightforward. I might also want to rebase a set of branches against my main branch so that I make sure I have whatever updates were made on main on my feature branch before I push it. The third thing I might want to do is pull fast forward only, usually, on those branches to make sure I have any changes that my collaborators have made on a branch that we're working on together. We're gonna to write a tool that makes it easy to do all three of those things to multiple branches at a time. Now, the first thing we're gonna to have to do is get the branches that we want. So let's create a get branches function here. We can get the branches by doing get branch. Let's just take a look at this. Now, okay, let's go ahead and call this function and then we're gonna run this, so I'm gonna change mod plus x get branch manager. And then in my home directory here, I do have a test repo that we could test this on. So if we run git branch manager, we get a list of all of the branches that we have. Now, the one thing I don't want here is this star representing the branch that we're currently on. And we can do this by passing a format, percent parentheses, and then we can put the basically variable name in the parentheses. So in our case, this is ref name colon short. We just want the short version of the branch name. So if we rerun this now, there we go, we got our list of branches as a clean list. Now this is where we can start using gum to choose a branch. Gum choose, uh, no limit, and let's just wrap this in a subshell, a variable there. Shell check here is warning me that we should quote this to prevent word splitting, but I actually do want this to split words because I want this to be a list of items that gum choose can choose from. All right, so now we can see this in action. If we run this, hey, look at that. Now I can use my arrow keys to choose from this list. And furthermore, I can actually hit the space bar to choose a couple of branches. And because I said no limit, we can actually use space to choose multiple branches. And we have these checkboxes here. If we didn't include the no limit flag, then we would only be able to choose one branch. But if I hit enter, notice that the branches we chose have been printed out to standard out. Basically, this is a way of choosing something from this list. And in our case, some number of things. So now that we have our get branches function, instead of just printing this to standard out, let's actually assign it to a branches function. And now let's also create a command here. And the command we can just do in line. We'll do gum choose again, and we'll just print our three options here. So we'll say rebase, we have delete, and we have update. And so now if we save this and rerun the script, we can see we can choose a branch and then we can choose a function. So now we can choose both our branches and our command. I do think though that it would be nice to have some titles so that we know what we're doing here. So for example, I'd love to be able to say, choose branches, branches to operate on. And then maybe down here, choose a command. And if we rerun this now, great. We have a title here saying choose branches to operate on, and then we can choose to delete. Now notice that our choices are not being printed out anymore. That's because we are storing them in these variables instead. Now it'd be cool to add a little bit of color to the word branch branches and command. And we can do this pretty easily with gum. And I'm actually gonna create another function for this. I think it'd be neat, since this is a tool for operating with git, if we use that git shade of red. So let's create a function here called git 
color text. And a convention I like here is to give names to our arguments. So we're going to start like that. If you're familiar with the bash function, you know that the arguments are positional. So one is the first argument, two is the second argument. In this case, I'm just going to assign it to a local text variable. And then we can do a gum style. And this allows us to just style some text. And so we'll style the foreground with a color that I'm just going to paste in here. This is the git color, and then we can use text. So now in our echo here, we can wrap this in a call to get color text. And let's do the same thing for command here. We are getting a couple of uh, warnings here from shell check. Let's just ignore those for now and rerun this script. And now we have branches here showing up in red. Very cool. So now our script is starting to look a little richer. Now we can do a little bit more with the gum style command. So let's add a neat little heading that gets printed out when we run the script. So up here we can do gum style again, and I'm going to break this one into multiple lines and we could do a let's do a double border start with that for the moment and then add some text here get branch manager and this will give us a kind of styled text being printed out at the top of our script so you can see if we run that we now have get branch manager being printed out but I think we can do a little bit more here first of all let's add a bit of margin we'll add one margin and one padding just to space out things a little bit and if we run that again okay that looks a little better. I'm not sure how I feel about the double line though. I think I kind of just want something normal, which is just the, yeah, just a single line there. That looks a little more classy. I think you know that we would want some color involved here. So let's do border foreground. What I want is the same color that we use here. So rather than duplicate that, let's create a variable at the top here that we can call get color and down here in the border foreground we can use get color as well one more thing i want to do here is color get and actually let's throw uh this branch icon that we have right here on the front of that as well so i've just copied that character I'm going to paste it in and then let's actually wrap this in our get color text as well. OK, there we go. That is the heading that I want for our script. Relatively classy, if I do say so myself. Now it's time to actually use branches and command to run the commands that we're talking about here. Let's echo branches. And the problem that we're going to run into here is we have a list of items coming out of get branches, but bash doesn't really have great support for lists or arrays. When we put it into the variable branches, we're going to get a single string with all of that text. And so down here where we echo branches, we're actually going to get a single string instead of a list of strings. And we can actually see this in action if we put our while loop in here. So we can say while read branch echo. Uh, the branch is branch. And what we would hope is for each of the branches we select, we get this echo. But if we run this now and I select all of our branches, you can see the branches and we get all of these on one line instead of individual lines. So our loop only ran once. So the way to solve this is to add a transform command between our echo and our while. And all we have to do is say, we're gonna transform each individual space into a new line. And then while will operate on the new line and we'll be able to see each of these individually. If we select them all and some command, now we can see our loop is running for each of our branches. So now we can actually start thinking about some commands here. And we can do this with a case statement. The case syntax is case command in. And now in here, we can do rebase option, delete option. And finally, we have our update option. If you're familiar with JavaScript and you know the break statement, this double semicolon kind of acts in the same way there. So let's actually see this in place. We can echo here, rebasing, deleting, updating branch. So if we run this now, and let's just select one and rebase, we're rebasing branch four. If we try and delete it, we're deleting branch four. And if we update, we're updating branch four. So now we just have to actually write our git commands, right? Which is pretty straightforward. So rebase is the trickier one. So let's go with the other ones here. First, we can do uh, git branch dash D. And then for updating it, we could do git checkout branch to switch to that branch. And then we can do git pull uh, dash dash FF dash only. This makes sure we'll only fast forward on this branch. We won't clobber any local changes that are different. Otherwise, git will warn us and exit. Let's actually give those a try before we write our rebase command. So we can, let's choose to delete branch four. And there we go, deleted branch four. And if we run this again, we can see branch four is no longer on the list. So let's do branch three and let's do update. I don't have a remote version for this repo, but notice that we switched to branch three, which is good. 
And I like that we get all of the typical git output here. I think that's one of the nice side effects of how this works. And we can do a git pull, but notice there is no remote and there is no tracking branch. And so this doesn't really succeed, but we can see that we actually did run the command. The last thing we wanna do is for git rebase. Now with rebase, I think we wanna let people choose which branch they're going to rebase against. And so we want to do another call to get branches. However, the difference this time is that you can only rebase a branch against one other branch. And so this no limit flag is gonna get in our way. So instead, let's assume that get branches takes an optional argument that we're gonna call limit. And we'll just assign it to that using our named argument syntax again. And now we need to see is limit set. So we can do that with a parameter expansion. So we can say if, and then I can say dollar sign curly braces limit plus X. This will be true essentially if limit is set and it will be false if limit is not set. In our then here, uh, let's copy our gum choose line here. And instead of no limit, let's say limit equals dollar sign limit. Uh, and our else is just gonna be our typical no limit. Now Shellcheck is complaining that we never actually pass any arguments to get branch. So let's do that here in our rebase. So we can get our base branch here, uh, get branches, and we're gonna pass it one as our argument. Instead of just echoing here, let's do git fetch origin, which of course in our case is gonna fail because I don't have have an origin, but then we can do git checkout dollar sign branch, and finally git rebase origin slash base branch. Now this is based on the way I use rebase most of the time. I rarely rebasing it against local branches, it's mainly origin branches. What we could do if we wanted to instead is add a dash dash all flag to our git branch call so that we could specifically choose a remote branch versus a local branch. But I'll leave that up to you if that is something you're interested in playing around with. Let's see if our rebase command will work. Okay, I've, I've edited out something here. I just tried to run this and we ran into a problem where uh, basically this limit variable variable uh, was not set. And I think the problem here is that we're assigning our possibly unset positional argument to the limit variable and therefore it will be set all the time. It just might be an empty string. So what I'm gonna do for now is uh, just remove our limit variable here and go back to one. And that should work because then we're never actually reassigning a variable. Let's give this a try. Hopefully this isn't gonna blow up in our faces. Okay, nice. So I can choose two branches here and then we can choose a rebase. Now notice the difference in this choice where I can only choose one, there's no checkboxes. So let's do main. Notice a couple of things here. So first of all, uh, origin does not appear to be a Git repository, so we couldn't read it. We did switch to branch one. We tried to rebase, but uh, invalid upstream, so that's fine, but now, uh, notice that we have our choice again. Because our choice of base branch is inside of our while loop, we get to choose a base branch for each one of the branches that we're rebasing. So that is a feature in this case. Uh, if you would always wanna rebase against the same branch, you could just move that outside of your while loop, maybe have an if condition checking to see if rebase is the command and doing any specific command setup. So I'll choose main again, and we should see the same failures, uh, invalid upstream, and then we do see we switched to the branch correctly and then we couldn't rebase. So in this particular test repo, some of these commands don't work, but we can see how they would work given the situation. So that was a look at Gum, the excellent shell script library by Charm. If you write Go scripts, then check out the rest of their libraries. But if like me, you mainly write Bash scripts, then Gum I think will be one of those tools that you'll be reaching for pretty often. Thanks so much for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.